Hello, welcome to another video of Chemo Topic, and today we will continue the concepts which we have discussed in the previous lecture. That is the hybridization concept, uh, how to determine the hybridization from steric number calculation, the geometry corresponding to the hybridization, and the shape and structure. So, in the last class, we have discussed about the tetrahedral geometry, uh, basically, to be precise the sp3 hybridization and corresponding geometry is tetrahedral and for corresponding shapes because in sp3 we know that the geometry will be tetrahedral and shape can be can differ one can be tetrahedral if no lone pair is present another one is if one lone pair is present then the shape will be pyramidal and if two lone pairs are present like in case of water molecule then the shape will be bent bent shaped or angular shape. So these three shape can be possible in case of sp3 hybridization. Now let's talk about some more hybridization topic and let's continue our discussion with few examples. So let's discuss about the PCL5 molecule. So for steric number, we have to know about the valence electron of phosphorus. No, I, we know that the valence electron of phosphorus is 5 because it resides into 15th group. So 5 plus 5 chlorine, which are monovalent divided by 2 equals to 5, and the hybridization will be sp3d. And for sp3d hybridization, okay. So let us assume that how how to determine the geometry? It is very simple. Let's suppose it is PCl3 and 2 chlorine is being added. So for PCl3, it is uh, it is a type of triangle, right? So we can say this is PCl3. This is the simpler geometry we can uh, we can form with three side atoms and with one central atom. So this is Cl3, PCl3, and 2 Cl, 2 Cl. Now, there is no uh, space left in the triangular plane. So, this forms a triangle and it is a plane. Let's suppose it is the triangle plane. So, one cell can come from the top, another one from bottom. So, this is the simple representation of geometry having steric number 5 that is having hybridization sp3d and this is the PCL5 geometry and this geometry is called this geometry is called PBP. Why? It is called this is trigonal by trigonal by pyramidal. Short form is TBP. Why it is called TBP? Let's discuss this one. First of all, the name suggests bipyramidal. So there will be two pyramids. One in the top, you can see. So here is the uh, one pyramid like this one and another one is the bottom so the top one containing one pyramid the bottom one containing another pyramid so bi pyramid and the base is tri trigonal planar so this is called trigonal bi pyramidal so in case of sp3d the geometry will be pvp now let's talk about the shape for this one as you can see that the valence electron of phosphorus phosphorus is uh, residing in the 15 series so the valence electron of phosphorus will be 5 and there are 5 chlorine atoms so 5 chlorine atoms will give 5 electrons and these 5 electrons and 5 electrons will get utilized in bonding so the valence electron left is 0 because all the valence electron of phosphorus atom is being utilized in order to form the bond so number of valence electron left equals to zero which implies lone pair on phosphorus atom equals to zero and whenever the lone pair number is zero then the geometry and shape will be same so in this case of pcl5 the shape or structure will be the same with the geometry that is tbp Okay, 
okay so now let's look and look into the tbp structure again so let's suppose i am writing over here pcl5 again now in this pcl5 structure if you can visualize it okay so this is the triangular plane and uh, uh, in the top there is a pyramid in the bottom there is another pyramid but what i am trying to say that this bond let's suppose this is a bond or this place b place or c place in a b and c there are three chlorine atoms and there is there are two different places again this is c let's suppose this c and this is d there is also chlorine present but the thing is that this a place equals to b plus equals to c plus why i am telling so because let's assume that you are sitting here in this place of chlorine now what will you observe that in your left hand side there is a cl in the right hand side there is another cl okay and in your top there is cl in your bottom there is cl that means okay so your left and right contains a single single bond your above top contains a single bond your bottom contains a single bond now you shift your position to this one now what will you observe you will observe your left and right will contain a single bond your top contains a single bond and bottom also contains a single bond now you shift your position to this one you will observe same thing that the right one left one top one bottom one that means that a position b position c position are called equivalent position so no matter what atom is present if you place it in either triangular plane that is if we have f with uh, in, in the place of cl if you place it over here or here or here the the uh, things are same so these are called equivalent positions so you uh, you will not be having different kind of shape by changing this position because these uh, three positions are same 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 thing goes to this position if you come to this one you will see that in your in your bottom there are three single bonds and in your upmost bottom there is one single bond and again if you change the place you will uh, see the same thing over here as well so this place c and d place are equivalent place equivalent place or equivalent position so if we place fluorine over here and cl over here or fluorine over here and cl over here then the thing is same because they are equivalent place but this triangular plane this triangular plane and this uh, top and bottom place are non equivalent so i am trying trying to say that a equals to b equals to c but not equals to c equals to d because these are present in the equatorial plane or so not not equatorial i will tell these are present in trigonal planar plane trigonal planar and c and d are present in this is called axial because it is looking like an axis so this is called axial positions okay so the, uh, this position these two positions are different from these three position but these two are called axial and they are same these three are called triangular planar moieties and these are same so there are two uh, different position in trigonal bipyramidal shape that is one in which resides into the plane and another one which are axially lying into that shape so how to uh, how to place different kind of atoms whenever we have options because in pcl5 all chlorine all at side atoms are chlorine so we don't have any option we can put all chlorine atoms in all the position but in place of cl if fluorine comes or in such uh, compounds if lone pair comes then where to place 
those atoms whether we have to place it in the triangular plane trigonal plane or we have to place it in the axial plane so for that reason we have to look upon the idea or uh, one theory which is called vscpa theory and in vscpa theory we have discussed it in the earlier but vscpa theory the full form is valence shell valence shell electron pair repulsion theory and in the previous video in the lecture number 2 i guess i have discussed about the repulsion theory of bond pair and lone pair and this is called the vscpa theory and in that theory if i try to recall some of that then we have discussed that the lone pair lone pair repulsion is greater than the lone pair bond pair repulsion is greater than bond pair bond pair repulsion so from this concept we can place different kind of atoms uh, in the tbp geometry or in the upcoming classes in the octahedral geometry as well so let's look in the sp3d hybridization again so if if we talk about the sp3d hybridization it is not a single hybridization i will like to consider it as a sp2 hybridization and pd hybridization why i am telling so because we know for sp2 hybridization the geometry is for sp2 that means the steric number is 3 so the geometry will be something like this right that and uh, thus this shape is called triang trigonal planar and for p d and to be precise this p is p z and this this is p d z d z that means and we know the shape of z if this is z axis then the d orbital will look like the p z only so and it will have a ring so this is positive this is positive two lobes are same that means i am not drawing the pz orbital this is dz square orbital and this part is negative which is basically xy plane so if dz square and pz combines pz also will have the similar kind of lobes plus minus so this will be pz and pz and dz will mix with each other to form the axial bonds that means they will mix with each other to form the axial bonds so the sp2 hybridization forms the triangular planar of the tbp this is the tbp like geometry right? this is this is the tbp geometry and this was the trigonal plane which was formed due to the hybridization of sp2 this one and these are axial positions axial axial position and this comes from hybridization of pz dz square and this comes from hybridization of sp2 or yeah sp2 and okay so two types of hybridization are present over there one is forming the trigonal planar moiety and another one is forming the axial bonds and another thing i would like to discuss that these are called axial bond and these position have a different name this is called equatorial positions equatorial positions okay so uh, th these are all about the tbp geometry so let's summarize what we have learned from about the tbp geometry okay so for sp3d we have learned that there are two types of hybridization first one is sp2 and another one is pz dz square it will form the trigonal plane and it will form the axial bonds axial positions now for pcl5 let's suppose this is the pcl5 and these 
is the triangular plane and this position is called equatorial positions equatorial positions and all the three sigma bonds are called equatorial bonds these are called axial bonds or axial positions axial position has being formed from the hybridization pz dz square equatorial is being formed from hybridization sp2 now there can be two types of side atom in pcl5 all side atoms are same so uh, how to proceed for that reason i would like to discuss about the bent's rule and bsp pair both are useful in these cases and i will discuss uh, with respect to the both of the rule the bsp pair theory and as well as the bent's rule so i was discussing about the bent's rule and if the lone pair is present then where to keep that lone pair where uh, whether in uh, in the equatorial position or in the axial position here we can see there are two hybridization sp2 and pz dz square and this sp2 contains percentage s more than the pz dz square because it contains s orbital but it doesn't contain any s orbital so we can say that the equatorial position is percentage s is is more and for actual position the percentage s character is less okay so equatorial position is percentage s reached and actual position is percentage s deficient so if the lone pair is present according to bent's rule then it is quite logical that in order to say about the lone pair we know that the lone pair are dispersed electron density which are alone which are not bonded so these the lone pairs are dispersed electron densities and it will try to reside in that position where it can get stabilization because the lone pair is get stability when whenever it resides nearer to the nuclei and in case of s orbital we know that being the s orbital as the s orbital is spherically symmetric so it is nearer to the nuclei than the p orbital so for the lone pair it will be very beneficial that if it is in, into the percentage s reduced places so in that case the lone pair will try to decide where, where, where the percentage s character is more that is why lone pair is often called s philic s philic moieties so the lone pair is s philic because it loves s philic means loving towards the percentage s so the lone pair loves percentage s character so if we have the lone pair in the central central atom in pbb geometry we can decide it into the we have to decide it into the equatorial position now let's come to the multiple bonds if the multiple bonds are present because we know the multiple bond that is a triple bond single bond these are also electron densities electron densities so they will also try to occupy where the percentage s character is more so like the lone pairs multiple bonds are also s philic in nature is philic in nature let's come to the electronegative atom like the fluorine chlorine bromine okay as we know if a hybridized orbital is percentage s reached if the percentage s character is getting increased into the hybridized orbital then the electronegativity of that particular hybridized orbital will also get increased because we have discussed about the sp sp2 and sp3 in the previous one and we know the bond length order was something like this that means the sp bond length is least then sp2 and then sp3 that means that sp can drag more electron so if we define the electronegativity with this chi then we can say that chi sp is greater than chi sp2 is greater than chi sp3 as the percentage s character in a particular hybridized orbital increases that means that particular hybridized orbital is uh, have, having the property of electron withdrawing in nature so the electronegativity of that hybridized orbital will get increased as we increase the percentage s character so in case of electronegative atom in in a particular electronegative atom the basic properties of electronegative atom is to drag electron from the other atom dragging of electron and let's suppose 
we just put that electronegative atom into the percentage S character in each positions. Then it will be tougher uh, for the electronegative atom to drag the electron from a more electronegative hybridized orbital as the percentage S is getting increased. That means in that particular hybridized orbital, the electronegativity is increased. So it will be hard to drag the electron towards itself for a particular electronegative atom. So it will not try to reside into the percentage S reached position, rather it will reside into the percentage S lesser position because in that cases they can drag. So dragging of electron will be easier where the percentage S character is less. That is why they are not S phobic, rather I would say they are percentage S phobic. And in that case, we have to recite this electronegative atom in the axial position of our PVP geometry because the axial position is corresponding to the PZ DZ square orbital hydration, which are percentage S deficient in nature. So, for the lone pair, this is for S phyllic, multiple bond S phyllic. So, for both multiple bonds and lone pairs, we can recite it in the equatorial position. But in case of electronegative atom, in case of negative atom, we have to place it in the axial position. So let's discuss some examples according to it. So let's start. Let's discuss about the SF4 molecule. So in SF4 molecule, the valence electron of sulfur is 6 plus fluorine is 4 divided by 2. So the steric number will be 5. That means the hydration will be sp3d implies the geometry automatically we can assign to be trigonal bipyramidal. Now let's consider the lone pairs that whether the center atom has lone pair or not. So for the sulfur the valence electron equals to 6. There are 4 fluorine atoms with, which will give 4 electrons. So in uh, from this 6 valence electron 4 electrons are utilized in order to form the bond and the valence electron left alone equals to 2 electron that means one lone pair so in the SF4 there is one lone pair inside the, uh, on the central atom now let's uh, consider so in case of SF4 the geometry is TBP but where to keep that lone pair and where to keep this fluorine because we know in case of lone pair and fluorine one is lone pair, another one is fluorine. So lone pair is S phyllic and fluorine is being an electronegative atom is will be S phobic. That means if we consider the lone pair, we have to place it in the equatorial position. And in case of fluorine, we have to recite it into the axial position. Okay. So let's draw the shape of the SF4. So this is the geometry and there is four fluorine atoms. Let's put the fluorine atom. Let's start by putting it in the axial position. Okay. So there are no axial position left. We have to put two fluorines in the equatorial position and one lone pair in the equatorial position. Like this one. So now let's erase this bond because it is only lone pair. So this is the shape of the SF4 molecule and we can see that the lone pair is residing in equatorial position and four fluorine uh, in between the four fluorine two are residing in the axial position and other two are in the equatorial position. Now if I draw this molecule something like this one. then. What will you say that the uh, shape is different from this or not? Let's suppose this is the equatorial space. So this is the equatorial position, this is the equatorial position and both are, uh, those are the axial position. So if you can see that these are equivalent because I have discussed earlier that the, all the three position in the equatorial plane are, are equivalent in nature. That means whether I, I put lone pad over here or here or here those will simply generate the same shape but in order to uh, have 
a symmetrical visualization uh, i have decided decided the lone pair like this one and if we talk about the shape now in, in case of shape we can't uh, this is a geometrical representation in case of shape we can't represent the lone pair we can't show the lone pair so the shape will be something like this something like this and we have to name this shape so this shape is called seesaw shape seesaw shape you have seen the seesaw in the park uh, that looks something like this let's suppose you are you and your friend are playing in the seesaw and it will go up it will go down and so on so this is looking like an inverted form or a rotated form of the seesaw this is this is why the shape is called the seesaw shape and the residing of the lone pair of electronegative atom are corresponding to the according to the bent's rule now the same thing we can uh, come across from the uh, bscpr theory that is the lone pair bond pair repulsion theory as well how i am discussing now 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 let's suppose we don't know about the bent's rule and the concept of asphilic and asphobic now, uh, now how to proceed with the vscpr theory because we know that the lone pair lone pair repulsion is greater than the lone pair bond pair repulsion greater than the bond pair bond pair repulsion so now uh, let's understand sf4 okay so there are two possibilities of drawing sf4 whether i draw it like this by keeping the lone pair in the equatorial position or by keeping the lone pair in the axial position something like this these are the two possibilities no other possibilities are present over here because there are only two position in the equatorial or in the axial let's assume you don't know the bent's rule then how to proceed so now let's see the uh, uh, the repulsion over here so this is the a representation this is the b representation we have to look upon that which representation is most suitable for this molecule so we can see this is lone pair and other are bond pair okay so this lone pair and bond pair are in 90 degree angle each other this lone pair this bond pair are in 90 degree angle with each other so there are lone pair bond pair repulsion two lone pair bond pair repulsion with this axial group and this axial group uh, within the range 90 degree angle or a representation i am talking about now there are all also another type of lone pair bond pair that is lone pair bond pair repulsion lone pair bond pair repulsion and there are bond pair bond pair repulsion as well so the lone pair bond pair repulsion is and if i talk about in the trigonal plane this lone pair bond pair repulsion are residing into the angle of 120 degree because we know in a trigonal plane this angle is 120 degree so the lone pair bond pair repulsion there are two lone pair bond pair repulsion for this lone pair with this bond pair this lone pair with this bond pair so two lone pair bond pair repulsion within the range of 120 degree angle and we know and we are not considering the bond pair bond pair repulsion as this is a weak kind of repulsion so the lone pair bond pair repulsion is uh, far uh, greater than the lone pair bond pair so there are two lone pair bond pair repulsion within the range of 90 degree that means they are closer than the 120 degree angle now let uh, let's look up the look up on the b representation as well so there is lone pair and we can see this lone pair and this bond pair this lone pair this bond pair or this lone pair this bond pair this lone pair this bond pair this lone pair and this bond pair are in 90 degree angle each other so there are three lone pair bond pair repulsion which are 90 degree angle to each other and another one this lone pair and this bond pair repulsion words were in the range of 180 degree angle so in case of a and b let's compare these two that there are uh, there are two lone pair bond pair repulsion uh, residing into the uh, into the distance of 90 degree angle but there is three lone pair bond pair repulsion residing into the distance of 90 degree angle 
Thus, the repulsion is greater in case of B representation. So we can say that the A representation is stable, more stable, and this will be the more suitable representation. So A will be the more suitable representation and it is according to the BACPR theory that is the valential electron pair repulsion which is nothing but the comparison between the repulsion of lone pair bond pair or lone pair lone pair repulsion. So we can erase this B representation and we have came across into the A most suitable representation according to the Benz rule as well. Now we can make another conclusion about the percentage and percentage P because we know that the equatorial positions are percentage is reached and the axial position are percentage is deficient and for the equatorial position for the equatorial position the theta is 120 degree because we know that in square uh, in trigonal planar the, uh, uh, the, uh, the angle between the three bonds are 120 degree but in the axial positions we can see that the theta are 90 degree because one axial position is lying over this and this is the trigonal plane that means this axis is making 90 degree angle or we can say this axial position is perpendicular to the trigonal plane so that means the theta for the axial position is 90 degree so and we know that the for the equatorial position it is percentage is reached and for axial position is percentage is deficient so we can make a conclusion general conclusion that if theta increases that means the percentage is also increases and vice versa and if the theta decreases the percentage is will also decrease so this is a generalized conclusion and it will be helpful in the other shape representation so we have to remember this one if the theta gets increased percentages will get increased in such kind of hybridization if theta is decreasing then the, that, that will be the percentage is deficient hybridized orbitals now look, uh, let's look upon other molecules as well like the SF4 and you can proceed via uh, those uh, two ro uh, rules as well because the ultimate result will be the same you can, whether you can go from the Benz rule or BACPR theory but according to me BACPR theory is quite elaborating because you have to make the possibilities you have to make the structures and then we can come to the conclusion about the most suitable structure but Benz rule is quite easier to uh, visualize that if the lone pair for lone pair bond pair and uh, lone pair and multiple bond that will be the S philic and for electronegative atom that will be the S phobic. So for so uh, now let's discuss about the ClF3 molecule. So for steric number calculation, the valence electron of Cl equals to 7 plus number of monovalence side atom 3 fluorine divided by 2 that is 5. That means the hybridization sp3d, the geometry is tbp, but what about the CA? So for that reason we have to calculate the number of lone pairs residing onto the central atom. So we know that the valence electron of central atom that is chlorine equals to Cl and the side atom fluorine will give three electrons so this three electron will uh, will be utilized in order to form the bond with the three electrons of the valence electron of chlorine so bond formation but there are still four electrons left four electrons left for cl atom and for four electron we can say this as two lone pairs so there are two lone pairs residing into the central atom chlorine and we have to place whether it is it will gonna reside into the equatorial position or in the axial position. So we know that for the uh, lone pair we have to reside into the uh, equatorial position. So that will be the central atom Cl. We have to reside the more electronegative fluorine atom into the axial position like this one. And we have two lone pairs over here. like this and this now this is a geometrical representation but if we try to uh, visualize the shape that will be only considering the bond pairs not the lone pair so that will look like like this one and it is looking like a t-shape right it is an inverted or rotated form of t-shape 
so this shape is also called t shaped like the previous one seesaw it is called t shaped so the name of this shape is t shaped now let's discuss about the xcf2 molecule so for the valence electron of xenon is 8 plus 2 monovalent side atom divided by 2 to be 5 and the hydrogen will be sp3t and the geometry will be tbp but what about the shape for that reason we have to again calculate the valence electrons sorry the number of lone pair electrons so valence electron of xenon equals to 8 we have two fluorine atoms with which will contribute two electron for bonding purposes so two electron from eight electron will get utilized to form the bond and the electrons left on the central atom will be six electron which is corresponding to three lone pairs so there are three lone pairs on the central atom xenon and we have to recite all the lone pairs in the equatorial plane so the geometry will look like this one Xz will be the central atom, three lone pairs in equatorial plane, and two fluorine from axial position. It is a geometric representation. If we consider the shape, then that will look like this one. This is shape, and we can see clearly that the shape is like a linear. So this shape is called a linear. This shape is called linear. So now let's discuss about the I3 minus molecule. So for steric number calculation, the valence electron of I7 plus 2 side atom iodide plus 1 charge 1 divided by 2 that is 5. So the hydration will be the sp3d. Geometry will be tbp. But what about the shape? So valence, we have to calculate the lone pair. So the valence electron on iodine, valence electron of iodine equals to 7 plus the charge we have to consider it so the total valence electron in case of i3 minus equals to 8 two side atoms are present as the iodine so they will contribute two electrons so in eight electrons two electrons are getting utilized with the two electrons with the side atom to form the bond two sigma bonds and left electrons number of left electrons on iodine equals to six that means here also three lone pairs are present over the iodine central atom. So we have to recite them in the equatorial position according to the Bain's rule. So all the lone pairs will occupy the equatorial position, two iodine will occupy the axial position and it is looking like and this will, there will be a negative charge over here. So this is the central atom and the shape will be something like this. You can easily tell the name of the shape to be linear linear shape so that's all about the st3 dehydration and let's recapitulate uh, what we have learned from the previous classes and in this class as well as if the steric number equals to 4 then the hydration will be sp3 the geometry will be tetrahedral and there are three kind of shape in tetrahedral geometry one is tetrahedral itself if there is no lone pair another one is pyramidal if there is one lone pair like the ammonia and the angular or bent shape angular or bent shape if there is two lone pair like the water molecule now let's talk about if the steric number is 5 then the hydration will be sp3d2 sp3d and this is not a ideal hydration it is corresponding to two different hydration one is sp2 and another one pz dz squared sp2 forms the equatorial plane pz dz squared forms the axial plane that means the equatorial plane is having percentages more than the equator than the axial planes so the geometry of sp3 hybridization sp3d hybridization will be tetragonal bipyramid trigonal bipyramidal tbp and it will be having several shapes like tbp can be a shape if there is no lone pair if there is one lone pair the shape will be c shock there are if there are two lone pairs the shape will be t shaped and if there are 
three lone pairs. Three lone pairs, then the shape will be linear shape. 